some signs of uh, seawall failure is going to be loss of soil, soft ground behind it when you're walking, kind of concavements, and then uh, cracking both horizontal and perpendicular cracking on the wall itself. These walls themselves are built in a series of panels that lock together, so you can check the vertical alignment on when you look down your wall and to see if there's any kind of shifting, if it's askew. That's a, one way to do a visual test. Another way to do a visual test is uh, looking for like rust stains or cracking in the concrete itself. Another visual sign you can see, if you look down at the wall itself in front of the wall with the berm or the mud line, you will see actual soil in front of these panel seams uh, that's building up. It'll kind of look like a pyramid over time. What's happening with the soil piling up is the wall itself would have been originally constructed with a filter fabric behind it. With time, as the tides are coming up and down, up and down, it tears at that fabric, and there goes your protection for whenever it rains or high tide, whenever the tide is going out, it pulling the soil through the wall. A seawall's job is not to stop water from coming in. It's to prevent the land from going out. So hydrostatic pressure is lateral pressure put on the wall and that can cause uh, cracking horizontally and vertically in the wall or displacement with the panels themselves. Your seawall is most tested when it, it's low tide and it rains, a heavy volume. So the easiest way to alleviate hydrostatic pressure is with drains. A lot of times with the old systems, those drains um, get drilled through the wall and they get clogged up after years and years and years and there's no way to maintain them. We install a jet filter system, which has a built-in removable cartridge. How that works is we core through the wall, bolt in the receiving side, and then insert the cartridge. And that stays there permanently. And once a year, you would remove it, clean it, pop it back in just to keep it flowing properly to alleviate that hydrostatic pressure. Most people are calling us because of the their potholes behind their wall, like their landscape guy can't get close to the wall anymore because the soil is just that unstable. The way we fix the potholes and voids that are behind the wall is we use a one part polyurethane resin and we inject that on the land side at each individual panel seam, sealing that wall up uh, all the way from the, the mud line or berm all the way up to the cap. In order to seal that seam, we have to fill all the voids that are behind the wall first. So we'll start pumping it in and then pressure will build up on the land side, forcing that material through the wall, which ensures that we have a good bead and seal on the wall itself. The reason why you want to use a company that installs a one part polyurethane resin is the flexibility of the material itself. So it's gluing these seams together and a seawall will move with the current ever so slightly. So this won't break the seal or crack and to allow material to come back through so the reason not to use concrete is A, the weight. It weighs about 65 pounds per cubic foot, opposed to the polyurethane, it's about four pounds per cubic foot, and it's very rigid. So as it bonds to the wall and the wall moves, it'll create cracking, and it's not actually solving the problem. A lot of times the solution that your landscape will provide will be to use rock, because one of the, the ideas is that sand is too fine, so they go to a bigger aggregate and that larger aggregate only decreases the life of the wall because it's bigger and it creates a larger separation as it's being pulled through those seams. Concrete itself is semi-permeable. With time, water will get into the concrete itself and start to affect the rebar that's inside. That rebar then swells. That's called spalling. Beginning stages of spalling will be minor hairline cracks. All right, that's pretty common. The more advanced stages of spalling will be actual separation in this crack pattern and you'll also see like staining, rust staining uh, along the wall. That's literally the rust of the rebar is bleeding through the concrete. With time, that spalling will get so badly that it's going to create serious cracking, which means easier pathway for water to get in there and only exacerbate this problem. The only way to prevent this from continuing is to seal the concrete and seal those cracks. It's important to understand that a majority of the strength of this concrete comes from the rebar reinforcement. So if the rebar is spalling and swelling, it's deteriorating, which means so is the strength of your wall. Uh, the reason you should call Florida Seawall Solutions is we have years of experience. Uh, we've been focusing in seawall repairs and specializing in polyurethane injections. Uh, the material we use is eco-friendly and comes with a 10-year uh, warranty. 
So with the seawall repair that we're using and the technology that we use to inject behind this wall, it's minimally invasive, doesn't require massive excavation at your home. A majority of our projects uh, do not require a permit and we can be in and out in a day. So if you call us for a free inspection, we're gonna come out there and do a visual inspection of the wall itself where we're checking alignment of the panels themselves, looking at the cracking on the wall and checking for loose soil or potholes behind the wall itself. If you see cracks along your wall, no matter how big or small, holes behind the wall or soft soil, you need to give us a call because these could be signs and symptoms of a failing wall. Florida Seawall Solutions, your local seawall repair experts.